Oh, hi. I'm Drew from BarLenses.com. While they may not realize it, we've been welcoming some new friends into the field recently. With online meetings, virtual classes, and visual presentations, everyday professionals from all industries are having to embrace, and no offense, but from what I've seen firsthand, at times struggle with basic elements of video production as part of their current workday. It may not seem like your Zoom call has much in common with a film set, but the guiding principles are one and the same, and having a working understanding of these fundamentals can help you establish a better quality video presence no matter what gear you're working with. Case in point, everything you see in this video is being shot on my work-issued laptop's camera. So. Let's go over a few quick tips and give you a basic foundation to make sure your video is working from home. Lighting. It's everything in video and your camera craves it. So make sure it's present and abundant to take your quality up a couple notches. Let's also make sure that it's not mostly coming from behind you. This is called backlighting and it's what gives you the whole witness protection look. <clears throat> Sorry, that's better. While we're at it, let's get away from windows altogether, unless you're facing one. They're never going to give you the nice background you think they will. To pull that off and have both you and your window exposed properly, you need something called dynamic range, and your laptop's camera doesn't have it. So keep your background simple, or if you want something a little more interesting, find a bookshelf. It's safe, provides some color to the shot, and proves to people you totally know how to read. Now, home lighting may be sufficient, but be aware that lighting from directly above can cause some harsh shadows. It's best to put your primary light source in front of you. This is known as a key light. For a practical home application, a lamp with a paper shade works best as it acts as a nice diffusion and casts soft, flattering light. If all you have is a more directional work lamp, you can cover it with parchment paper or bounce it off a nearby wall. If you're feeling up for it, a secondary light on the opposite side can balance out contrast and fill in shadows. And now, you've officially been introduced to a key and a fill light. Audio. Along with lighting, it's the most important quality that sets professional and amateur video apart. Just make sure you are always speaking in the direction of your mic to create a clear and consistent audio experience for your audience. A lot of us are stuck with our laptop's microphone, and that can be okay. It's designed to pick up your voice. The problem is... It'll also pick up everything else happening around you. If you're delivering classes or presentations, you can think about a better quality mic like I'm using with this Rode NT-USB or an inexpensive lavalier mic that clips right onto you and plugs into your computer. The thought process is simple. The closer you can get the microphone yeah, to you... You can hear that, can hear that better. Okay, I'll just stay here. Without looking like a weirdo, the better. Framing. In photo and video, the rule of thirds guides all. So here's the gist of it. Divide your screen into thirds, horizontally and vertically. Place the subject and its most important features in relation to these lines based on what you're trying to achieve. Keep in mind here, the subject is you. You're trying to mimic the feel of an in-person interaction, so your most important feature is eye contact. Roughly align your eyes with the top horizontal divide and center yourself, good advice for the time, using the verticals. Distance yourself from the camera so you're framed from mid-torso up. A medium tight shot. Avoid the floating head omniscient being vibe and don't go too wide as it invites the audience's eyes to wander and potentially question your life choices. Also, don't cheat to achieve proper rule of thirds alignment by simply tilting your screen. Stack whatever you need to get your camera at eye level. Remember, it's about eye contact and replicating the in-person look and feel. Overly high placement doesn't exactly convey confidence, and the common low placement leaves you looking down at everyone in your meeting. If you don't see the problem with either one of these don't scenarios, we may have a bigger issue than our understanding of video. So there you have it, new friends. Instilling production quality into your workday may not be a pressing need for a lot of us right now, but if all it takes is understanding how you utilize what you already have to come across your best, 
why not go for it? Don't give your audience the chance to get distracted and take you or your message less seriously. Now, for a lot of our typical audience of content creators, these tips are probably obvious and second nature. But since we at Borrow Lenses try to help video professionals every day, we figured the least we could do is try to help everyday professionals as they embrace video. So got a question or need some help with your work from home setup? Leave it in the comments below and check out some of our other videos if you want to keep learning more about video production fundamentals. Welcome to the rabbit hole.